My next guest is Mayor Erin Stewart from hard hitting New Britain. I've been wanting to say that for a while, where she's been the mayor for a, few, for a few terms now. Mayor Stewart, thank you so much for joining us. You also, of course, ran for governor, lieutenant governor last year. You're in the middle of a reelection fight right now, as a yeah. matter of fact, uh, going for another term. Does this year feel different than other years? Yes, it does. You know what? I think it feels different this year because I'm coming off the heels of a statewide campaign. Right, very different. So there's always a, a worry, you know, do are people thinking? that, you know, I lost for governor, you know, how, well, how does that I mean, play in? Have you come across that when you're at the doors where people say, well, you ran for governor last year. Are you really, yeah. are you a short timer here See, in our city? I don't know. I don't get that because born and raised in New Britain, my sure. family's still here. No, there's not a person that thinks yeah. that I'm not committed. But I think people are always wondering, are you going to give it another go again? Are you going to stay with yeah. us? I'm like, well, I'm here. And you know what? My work's not done yet in New Britain. Given the partisanship divide we've now seen, not just in Connecticut, but nationwide, uh, you are in a, as, as we've discussed many times before in NBC Connecticut, a heavy, uh, you're heavily outnumbered, but from Democrats to Republicans oh, when yeah. it comes to registration in your city. So is that coming up even more or not you really? That just means I can't take anything for granted, right? So as a Republican outnumbered, I think it's about seven to one. Wow, yeah. So you can't take anything for granted because even if a small percentage of, uh, you know, Democrats come out more than before, I have something to, to worry about. So I have to make sure that I'm getting my message across the same way that I would uh, with any campaign. My mentality is I'm 10 points behind no matter who's running against you, me. You passed a state budget, uh, a city budget earlier this year. Uh, no tax increases. Uh, yeah, like, do, do Doing a shimmy on that. Um, yeah. Uh, is that what, what's a, is that a result of? I mean, the state budget was good to you guys this year, so you were able to kind of do a little bit of planning. Both last well, year and this year was pretty good to you guys. Yeah. You know, no tax increase. I was getting messages from some fellow mayors across sure. the state, that's basically you know cursing my existence. How did you do this? Yeah. Um, we've been planning for for a long time, and you plan for that rainy day. I didn't dip into our rainy day right. fund, um, but what I created a couple years ago was when we were restructuring our debt. I created this fund. It's called the Tax Stabilization Fund. And every, um, every year we've been kind of chipping away and using a little bit of that to yep. offset the need to have to increase taxes. And this year it definitely helped us out a lot. We're grateful for yeah. the help that we got in the state budget too. More money towards education. Uh, last week your uh, party, the Connecticut Republican Party, re-elected J.R. Romano yeah. as, its, as its chairman. You've known him a long time. I have. Uh, 2020 is going to be a difficult year for your party. No doubt about do you it. Acknowledge in Connecticut. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then what does it look like? I mean, do, do, do they need to be listening to more people like Aaron Stewart? You have met with the president, of course, on at least one occasion. Yeah. Um, but does the party have to run from him in some of these elections? Or do you say, you know what, he's our president and I'm sticking with him? I think that what we've seen in previous years, right, and look at what yep. happened the last cycle, you know, people are looking for a moderate-minded person, uh, an independent-minded person to, to lead the state and to run for office. You know, I have very, I'm conservative in many ways, but I've described myself as, um, you know, a, a moderate, yeah. a, a very moderate conservative. I'm not going to hide from that. I'm not on one far right. I'm definitely, certainly not far I know you're not left. left yeah. But I feel like I, I fall in line with the majority of Connecticut residents are. Sure, I, I think we need to start running candidates in this state Republicans need to look really long and hard at who they're running and who they're appealing to when so, it comes to an election. So does that mean you need to not be worrying about the quote base and you need to be looking much broader, considering what the Democrat to Republican divide is in this state? You never want to take the base. You always have to pay attention sure. to the base. But you have to start paying more attention to those unaffiliated and independent voters. And that's where I think the mistake is always made, because we're appealing too much to a, a worried about a primary, yeah. right? Where I look at what I had to go through. Everything's a learning experience, sure, right? right? And I, I lost. Uh, I came in second. That's all right. Um, but I learned a lot. And what I did learn was that maybe perhaps in that primary, I was trying to appeal too much towards the moderate and unaffiliated yeah. base and not paying attention to the Republicans that were going to vote in the primary. So it's a very unique, delicate balance, and it makes it very uh, difficult. I want to shift gears talk about infrastructure investment. Your yeah. city has very much benefited yeah, yeah. from CT Fast Track. Uh, you've, you've been a supporter of that since day one, <laughs> uh, which makes you in the minority in your party. Yes, it does. Uh, uh, but let me ask you this. On the issue of investment, on the issue of tolls, if CT Fast Track gets expanded, if maybe there's better connective service, connecting service to the Hartford rail line, if Route 9 gets improved and Route 84 gets improved and tolls pay for all that stuff, isn't that all good for New Britain? 
I don't like tolls, Max. <laughs> I don't but, like them. But, but, but if but you I, gotta pay for all that stuff, which you gotta agree, you gotta pay for all the stuff that I just said. Yes. Right? Yes. How are you gonna pay for it then? Well, you should be paying for it the way that a government is supposed to pay for it with infrastructure bonds. And listen. Well, that's one way, but then that's that's just and me the money, paying for it then. And the money should be in the account that it's supposed to be sure, in. Sure. Yep. And it special should be going. Fund, yep. yep. And the special transportation fund, which gets rated year after year after year, should not be touched by the legislature. The money needs to sure. stay there. But, unfortunately, that's not a reality. That's true, but, and by the way, this is not an endorsement of raiding that money, what I'm about to say here. Sure. That's not, what I'm about to say is not that. Yeah. But if you need another $500 million to yeah. pay for some of these things, that money ain't coming tomorrow. You no. need it somehow. Yeah, you need it somehow. Oh, you just can't pull it off the money tree in the yeah. backyard at the Capitol? I have one of those at oh, home. Okay, I have right, one of those at home. I don't know about you in New Britain. Um, People have accused so me of then, having one in the back. So, 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 so then how... So, so should it be borrowing then? Are you or are you comfortable with that? Yes, and I, I am comfortable with that, and I think I'm comfortable with that because look at how I'm paying for our infrastructure improvements in the city of New Britain. We're not, you know, in a financially beautiful place, yeah. um, but I know that I have to borrow for those infrastructure improvements because that's what people expect from your government. But I think balancing that um, with implementing another essential tax, you know, I, I get it, but I think that you're you're doing more harm than good when you're talking about the the toll system and. I think that people are just, they just don't want it. They just do not want it. I get people that say to me all the time, yeah. you know, well, how is this going to impact New Britain? We have Route 9, Route 7, right. 284. Sure. You can't come into the city. You would not be able well, to no, come into the city. Well, no, there's no plan to put a toll on 9 or 372, and you know that. But that being said, Aaron Stewart, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> I'm always thank right. Thank you very Absolutely much. Not. And we'll be right back. <laughs>